like what, what you're able to do with uh, TensorFlow.js. Uh, I'm going to go through a little bit of the docs, but not too much because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you know TensorFlow in Python, you, it turns out you know TensorFlow in uh, JavaScript. It's pretty similar, um, especially as of late. Uh, I'm going to start out with a basic neural net, kind of walk you through some specifics in terms of training. Uh, the model itself is really simple, and that's not the point. I'm actually going to show you what training looks like and, and, a, and a few other uh, tricks. Uh, I'm going to walk through some pre-trained models, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy a pre-trained model from Google or from the TensorFlow project. All right, so deep learning in JavaScript. I mean, this is a crazy, crazy idea. Um, when I first started playing with it, I really thought, you know, in order to do anything interesting, you have to train on these giant, you know, GPU clusters. Uh, how are you going to be able to do this in JavaScript within the browser? That, that was my initial reaction, right? I've been, I've been playing with it off and on for a while, but to do anything interesting, it was pretty challenging. So why, why would you do this in JavaScript? Well, there's three main reasons. Uh, one is it makes everything interactive. Um, and I'll, I'll dive into that in just a moment, why things are interactive. It's JavaScript, so that's obvious. But how you actually interact with uh, TensorFlow.js makes it um, pretty useful. Uh, privacy, so that, that's a big one, right? So I don't have to send data to the server. I can deploy a model from the cloud, whatever that means, down to the browser. No data goes back up into the cloud. That, that is a big, uh, uh, is going to be a, a major topic over the next uh, couple of years um, and, and moving on. Uh, and finally, you have built-in GPU acceleration. So it supports OpenGL out of the box, um, and that is a, a big thing. So even if you have a MacBook Pro without the crazy NVIDIA GPU um, video card like I do, you still get GPU acceleration. Uh, a few other things, we'll get into these details in a, in a little bit, but pre-trained models, it's a big deal. Uh, you can convert existing Python models, and I'm gonna just show you how easy it is uh, in a little bit. Um, and also, you can train in the browser and also via Node. All right, let's get started with some examples, um, and then we'll actually go through my, my terrible code. Um, so first of all, here's somebody, as, as I was looking into this, what, if you were going to get started, what, what might you do? So this is actually was a front-end dev. Um, who wanted to be wanted to start playing with machine learning? So you can see it's very pretty. And you just started with the MNIST dataset, and so just simply put, you 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 can interact with this TensorFlow.js model just simply by using your mouse and writing a number. And of course, you see that it's classifying correctly, and then it's got a pretty nifty um, output. This one actually I, I found quite intriguing, not because it's Mortal Kombat, but because it kind of tells me what the future might hold in terms of interactive, uh, interacting with a, a camera. Uh, the way I think about this is Xbox Connect, if you're familiar with that concept. A lot of the things that uh, Microsoft researched out of Cambridge, all the cool things they did, turns out it's really easy to do that. You don't need Chris Bishop's team anymore to do some of the cool stuff. You just import from TensorFlow.js, it's that simple. So this one was actually pretty interesting because this got my brain like, you know, the, the gear is really firing up. Uh, so what, what's happening here is there's, there's actually several things. I actually have my notes here because I, I wanted to uh, make sure I got it correct. Uh, so, so there's a neural net to interpret the signs. So basically, instead of doing like language translation, well, it is language translation, but from his hands, then text is sent to a speech system also via neural net. Um, and that is sent to Alexa, and you'll see this echo right next to the computer. Um, and then, let's see, speech-to-text system to tran transcribe the response from Alexa. And um, basically, Alexa is asking what, uh, you ask Alexa what time it is, and Alexa fires back, and then that, there's also speech recognition on top of that. So all of the individual things that typically are associated with uh, computer vision or deep learning in general are all captured in one project. I mean, also, I think it's probably a, a potentially a very practical application. Uh, being not, you know, the Alexa piece, and eh, maybe not, but uh, the sign language interpretation, definitely. 
This is the one that I think is the most exciting. Um, PostNet, this, I mentioned Xbox Connect earlier. Um, this is actually what Xbox Connect did very well. Unfortunately, the, the product itself flopped. Um, but you can see how straightforward this is. You can see that uh, the skeleton of each of the three people on the right and, and the one person on the left, um, the skeleton is captured pretty well. Those dots are actually capturing the two eyes, the cheekbones, and the nose. Uh, and you can, you can configure it a bit. But I, I actually see a lot of applications here. I also see a lot of Big Brother-esque type of applications. So some um, both good and evil potentially with, with PoseNet. And I, I think that's going to shake things up uh, in a little bit. Quick plug for a book called Little Brother. Um, if you've ever, you know, there's Big Brother, of course. There's Little Brother. It's a fiction book. It's about basically... Um, government taking over, right? But actually using computer vision to make that happen, it actually uses something similar to PoseNet, which is kind of scary, for using uh, gate analysis to uh, uniquely identify a person. So like I said, both good and evil, potentially. One more, I, I think we might have one or two more examples, and then we'll get to some real code. Um, so hand tracking, this to me was actually pretty cool because I saw something similar to this recently where somebody was doing some augmented reality where they were actually playing Mario Brothers in real life. They're actually going through a park, jumping up and hitting a block, mushroom comes out, right? So you're able to interact with machines in, in new ways. So clearly you're able to, on the right, actually control some kind of a, um, Atari 2600 type game um, just with your hands alone. Uh, I, I could see easily that being tied together with something like Mario Brothers and AR. And if you want to give an AR talk, please see me. I would love for somebody to give an AR talk. Um, one final thing, and I'm not going to go through the details tonight. I was actually hoping to have something to show, but I, I, I failed miserably. Um, transfer learning is where I actually think a lot of the, the real possibilities are. The ability to build something in the cloud and then deploy it in the browser, um, I actually think that's going to be very, very useful moving forward. Um, let's start with one example. So it's a little bit more interactive. Hopefully you've seen this. There's me. Okay, so the way this is gonna work, if you haven't played with this already, um, I, I promise there's code. We're gonna get to code. Uh, a few examples, because I, I was even just talking to everybody, and not, not everybody's aware of what you can do with TensorFlow.js. This is about a year old demo from Google. Um, if you hold your mouse down, it's actually training um, the green group or the green class. Okay, so you just hold it down and notice how it's, hopefully you guys can see that. Is it a little better? Okay, so just holding this down, it's actually recording over and over and over these different examples. And what's actually happening under the hood, so this is actually transfer learning, what is happening is it's taking a neural net and it's chopping off the head, right? And it's taking this image and feeding it through the network and it's transforming the, the features. Those features are then being fed into a K nearest neighbors, a really, really simple uh, um, nearest neighbors um, type algorithm. So on the fly, you're actually having a classifier real time. So I'm going to change this up just a little bit. Okay, you see quite a few examples. And no, notice how that when I step in front of the machine, it automatically classifies. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more. Okay, notice how when I step in front of the computer, it turns green. You see the, the cat over here. Okay, so I, I trained that real time. So what it did was actually map those images into individual classes, but the K and N is not 
trained on the actual uh, image. It's trained on a, a transform feature. Um, I think it's roughly 64 uh, dimensional vector. So that is transfer learning in action. So rather than trying to like walk you through it, I just wanted to show you this is actually what that thing does. There's also Pac-Man with your face. Same idea, I'm not gonna go through it. Put the link in here, I'll post the slides on um, the Meetup site later on. Hopefully you've already seen this, but if you haven't, that's great. But just to give you a little bit of an overview, you do the same idea, you train, but notice this guy's head. Hopefully you can see it. It's not letting me zoom in. So this guy, he's actually tilting his head up. If he wants to go up with Pac-Man, go left, right, or down with Pac-Man, he's actually able to play Pac-Man with his head, or as I said in the slides, with his face. Okay, so TensorFlow JS 1.0, it came out um, one month ago, and a lot of improvements have been made. Uh, in particular, so I've actually included the, the link to the YouTube video here. It's about 13 minutes, it's pretty informative. Uh, the main thing is, is that the, the TensorFlow in Python and the TensorFlow in JavaScript are very, very similar now. Uh, in fact, I'm actually gonna show you in just a moment how similar they are. Um, so not only does it feel like Python, there's also, um, if you haven't been following in, in Python, uh, in TensorFlow 2.0, basically Keras is going to be the main way to interact with um, uh, I'm gonna choose my words wisely there. Uh, it will be a primary way to uh, interact with TensorFlow. And, and there's a few other things that you have within Python's version of TensorFlow that you now have within the JavaScript version. In particular, this tf.data. If you're used to loading things with this new approach uh, in, in, in Python, then you'll, it will be the same thing um, in, in JavaScript. Uh, TensorBoard support and this TFJS viz, I'm actually gonna show you what that means in just a moment. Um, so let's look at code. Um, so this is slide-based code, not real code, not yet. This is straight out of the readme um, from TensorFlow.js. I wanted to show you before we really get moving how simple this is. So notice this is very Keras-like where you have, so you're importing TensorFlow.js and here's your, um, your, your library, and you're going to access this sequential, and you're gonna add various layers like you would normally do in, say, Python. So you have a one unit um, uh, dense layer, just to do linear regression. And so you compile just like you would do in Python, and so your loss function here is means squared error, and you're gonna use stochastic gradient descent. You can use a bunch of other ones just like in, in Python, right? So you compile the model just like you would um, in, in Python. Where things get a little different is you start dealing with the JavaScript nuances, but really um, until you get deep into the weeds, it's roughly the same thing. So notice here you have one, two, three, four. These are your x's, right? And so what you're doing is you're turning that into a vector, um, so a 1D vector of length four, right? And so corresponding to those are your y's, so this is just doing basic linear regression. So if you were to plot this, you would have a scatter plot of one, one, two, three, three, five, four, seven. And so here, what you're gonna use is stochastic gradient descent and actually to fit that, that model. So this is the line I really want everybody to pay attention to. So if you're not familiar with JavaScript, this is where things get a little different. Um, this guy right here, model.fit, it doesn't return an object like you're used to if you're used to a Python. It actually returns a promise so like asynchronous, um, it's an asynchronous call. So what a promise ultimately is, if you're familiar with say async IO or something similar to that in Python, it's somewhat similar. Um, so this guy right here, model.fit, you, you can't just automatically call uh, model.predict um, because if you were to attempt to do that in your JavaScript code, if things are not finished when you call model.predict, uh, some kind of error will be thrown. So this dot then, Really what you, to the newcomer, uh, so I'm not a JavaScript developer, so if I'm gonna offend you, apologies. Really, I don't care. Um, so this dot then, really what it's saying is that once, oops, 
once this thing is done, then you will take this action, right? So this model.predict, it's already in scope because I defined it outside of this block. That's an important, important detail. Um, model.predict, if I'm going to now take this linear regression I fit, I'm gonna say at x equals five, what is that prediction, right? Any questions so far? Okay. All right, let's look at the docs just a little bit. So there's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of tutorials, don't really care about that. Uh, I, I do want you to, sh to want you to see that um, built into the, the uh, website itself, um, JavaScript is not a first class citizen as of yet. Let me prove it to you right now. So I'm on the JavaScript page, right? If you were to go here, you know, notice you can click API, I'm gonna not do that. Go here, this actually confused the heck out of me over and over again. I was going, why is the, where's the, where's the JavaScript code? I was just on the JavaScript and it actually took me to the general purpose thing, I actually gotta click JavaScript. So if you, I'm not gonna go through all the details here, knock yourself out on your own time. What I do wanna show you is that the things over here, um, tensors, um, the sequential things, the, the, the model things, all of the code, I'm sorry, here we go. As you dig through this, my main point is to show you that once you learn the Python version, there's very little to learn about on the JavaScript side. And you can go line by line or a, uh, API call by API call and notice that it's the same thing. The syntax is, is mostly the same. Where things get different are the promises. Okay, so let's um, talk about exclusive OR classification or XOR if you're not familiar with it. Um, XOR was used to settle debates long, long time ago. Um, only a few people cared. Um, no one really cares now. Uh, some people do. I had a professor in college who cared, and uh, he's 65, and that tells you everything you need to know. Sorry, I didn't mean to be ageist. It was just him, not uh, whatever. Apologies. Um, so something about linear regression can't touch this. That was actually the main uh, debate at the time, and uh, you know that was an issue back before you had transforms, uh, because there are a bunch of other ways to do this. Uh, but of course, no one really thought about that in the 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever. Okay, so exclusive OR. If you were a computer science major or an electrical electrical engineer major or something similar, you've seen this in spades, um, but if you haven't, let's go through this. So what you're ultimately doing with an XOR table is you have two inputs, X1 and X2. If they're both off, so zero means off, just like in binary, like a, a, a bit. So if both of them are off, then your target, your output is off, right? This is an XOR gate. And so notice that if both of them are on or both of them are off, they map to zero. And if, both, if one of them is off and one of them is on, they map to one, right? So I'm assuming everybody has seen this, but if you haven't, um, there you go. That's not really gonna get in our way very much. Um, oops, that was a little bit out of order. Um, ultimately, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use Create React App. If you haven't used this, this will get you started. I highly recommend everything you do getting started, you just use Create React App. You don't have to deal with the JavaScript nonsense. Okay, let's get started with actual code. Um, can everybody see my screen? Is that a little better? Okay, good. Okay, so when you do create React app, you get something very similar to this. Um, I'm not gonna go into a lot of details. The most important thing here is notice this XOR model. So XOR model is actually loaded from um, this file here, XOR.js. Uh, let's look at the code. All right.
Cool. Um, I actually thought the power went out, then I realized the mic was on and was really confused. Um, okay, so hopefully everybody can see. So the, the main thing here is that, as we saw before, we have um, the 0, 1, 1, 0, and then mapping to that was this exact table I just showed you. Uh, it comes here in the form of x's and y's, so our training data, so to speak. Um, as before, I'm importing uh, TensorFlow uh, JS as TF. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the code here. I will push this to GitHub. I haven't done it yet. Um, most of it's fairly straightforward if you're a JavaScript developer. If you're not, um, have fun. So let's look at the, the, the main bit of code. Um, so here, what we're ultimately going to do is notice you see this async uh, function. Come back to that in just a moment. Uh, we're going to take those x's and we're going to assign them as uh, training data. And then we're going to one hot encode the 0, 1, 1, 0. We're going to build a really simple model here, right? So we're going to, like I told you before, this is pretty similar to uh, normal, usual TensorFlow code. Um, so notice I haven't done anything too fancy um, in terms of the, uh, the, the uh, network itself, right? So one hidden layer, um, five hidden units, apply a sigmoid activation, excuse me, Right? The input shape is two-dimensional because we're going to either pass in 1, 1, or 0, 0, or 1, 0, et cetera. Uh, and then finally, we're going to classify either 0 or 1. Right? Um, I'm going to use Atom Optimizer. And this is actually very similar to what we just saw on the readme. Right? So we're going to compile that. And now we're going to start noticing a little bit of a, a difference from what you've seen in Python. Python. OK, so notice this await thing. That, that's asynchronous. So before, I told you um, we're going to call model.fit, right? And so that's going to train like you're accustomed to. Um, I'm going to use validation data. This is the old school technique on exclusive OR. Uh, notice my training data and validation data are the same. OK, so that is by design. That's not like trying to cheat or anything. The goal here is not classification accuracy. It's just an old graybeard debate. All right, so um, there's a callback here. So a callback, what, what you should think, um, if you're not familiar with this concept, at the end of every epic, this function is going to be called, or this closure, technically. Um, I'm going to send in the epic information, as well as a, a bit of uh, information about the logs. In console log, I'm actually going to write this to the browser. So the, the epic, this is actually the epic number. And the loss, I'm going to write the validation loss and the val validation accuracy to the console window. All right. The final thing here, kind of jump down. So if you're not familiar with React, you have this concept of a render, render function. Um, I'm going to have a button. So this is mostly HTML, but it's not quite HTML. Um, when, a, when this button is clicked, there's going to be a method called train model. That's going to be called, and we're going to go to it in just a second. And once that model has been trained, I'm going to show a few other things, and that's what this is showing. And it'll make perfect sense uh, when we actually go through um, this exercise. But before I do, when this button is called, or a button is clicked, um, train model itself will then be um, this will be invoked immediately. And notice it's asynchronous, right? So everything down the chain is asynchronous. That's the important part. So what this is saying is that I'm going to call my train method, the thing that we just went through, right? And it's going to take a while. I don't, I, I'm not going to block on that thing. Otherwise, the browser would just come to a standstill. Um, so this thing is going to just run a little bit, because I, I want my UI to continue to run. When it is done, I'm going to take that fitted model, and I'm going to just log it to, the, to the, the, the console window just so I can inspect it if I want to. And then what I'm going to do is set the state. So I, I have a very minimal state for this basic app. And I'm going to take that trained model and add it to the state. All right. 
Okay, so once you've installed everything, um, it's pretty str straightforward to do that. Um, this is a Node app, so I'm gonna click NPM start. Okay, so notice the, the app is launched in my browser. Okay, very, very basic app, right? So here, let me zoom in. Okay, so this is an exclusive order model with TensorFlow.js. To get started, just click on the, the train, all right? So this is a very simple example. So um, we're gonna do it a couple times. This is pretty fast, but you're gonna see what's gonna happen. So over here, uh, this is unfortunate. I have no idea how to zoom in on this. I could have sworn I did that. Okay, we're not, not gonna go through all of this. The, the, um, that, that callback we were looking at just a moment ago, notice you have Epic 91, Epic 92, Epic 93, and you see that the validation loss is decreasing over time. So, so this is useful for logging, right? Um, but not gonna be very useful to make sense of real time. So, I mean, what I can assure you is starting off my valid validation accuracy was 50%. Validation loss was fairly high with respect to how, how much we maximize. Started out at 0.73, dropped down to 0.006, right? So we're gonna revisit that in just a moment. So now that I've trained this, I'm actually going to make a classification, right? So what should the answer be? Yeah, very good, it worked, yay, okay. Uh, zero, one, what should the answer be? One, okay, good. All right, just to confirm. So in, in case you're wondering where those answers came from, zero, one, maps to one, we got it right. Okay, so we settled the old gray beer um, debate. Okay, so coming back, oops, what did I do? So coming back to this guy, like I said before, I would not wanna do this. We have tools like TensorFlow, or excuse me, TensorBoard to make sense of training and the like. Uh, let me show you an alternative. Um, there's a lighter weight version of TensorFlow, um, or excuse me, TensorBoard. Um, I'm gonna show you that right this second. Okay, so before I said we have this XOR model, right? That's my React component. Um, I'm going to, oops. I'm gonna pull a Martha Stewart and show you the pre-made thing. Um, the only thing I've changed here in this um, example is, where's the callback? I've changed the callback, all right? So to prove it to you, previously this was the callback. We wrote everything to the browser, console.log, and those are all the things that were being piped into, um, into the browser window. The only thing I've changed here is I've changed the uh, callback to tfviz, and I'll, and I'll specifically call that out in just a moment. A uh, couple more details, how, how do you import it and the like. It turns out it's pretty easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a tab called training, and within that I'm going to put training history. The two things that we were just looking at, validation loss, validation accuracy, as well as loss and accuracy, these are test uh, scores. To import that guy, all I did was add this line. Um, import tfviz from tfjs-viz. And so this was actually a recent addition uh, in TensorFlow.js 1.0. Okay, so just one more time. The only thing I've done is added that. There's actually a couple of buttons I've added too, but you'll, um, 
see that in just a moment. So TFJS Viz has this thing called a visor, right? So I'm going to um, overwhelm you. Well, now I'm showing that I'm not a front-end developer. <laughs> um, everything is not scaling. Okay, so we have this visor, all right? So I'm gonna do a hello world here. So I'm going to actually click this add TFJS viz, right? So you see a hello world is my first surface. To do that, what I did is I did one thing in particular. So I had a button with a event-driven function. This is actually the syntax to add to that tab. So I created a tab called hello world like I said before, and I actually titled it my first surface, right? So that's where that's coming from. All right, now this time we're not going to, we're not going to open this guy, all right, the console. This time I'm going to train, just like we did before. And now you can see I actually have some real-time stats. So I believe it's using Vega. Um, you can see the loss and the validation loss are coming down together. Uh, which doesn't always happen. Uh, I have 100 uh, epics here, and so notice how it converges nicely. Great. Same exact example, but this time I don't have to actually look into an inspect window or uh, the, the console. Um, as before, this when I click classify, it'll show zero, okay? But the, the main difference here, and, and this is a big addition to uh, 1.0 of TFJS, is this visualization component. Um, notice here there's on batch end, uh, there's on epic end, there's actually a few other things you can um, add into that visualization. And I believe you can also add in your own things similar to TensorBoard, probably a little bit more. Um, I don't think it's as easy to use as TensorBoard to add your own stuff, but um, I think you have that capability. Any questions so far? Okay, very good. All right, um, so just to recap really quickly, all we did, we took the X's and Y's, we created tensors, um, here's the model just as before, uh, 100 epics, um, we did the fit, and remember this, this asynchronous bit, that's the thing that will bite you if you're new to JavaScript, uh, modern JavaScript, and just to stress to you, um, diagnostics, uh, a visualization after a very minor change uh, to the callbacks. Okay, so that is the first demo. Uh, let's do something a little bit more useful. That is not useful. We're going to um, look at a, a um, pre-built um, classifier called mobile net. Um, what it is, is a, a trimmed down version of one of the image net um, um, deep neural nets. So I, I, I actually meant to include it into the slides. I actually forgot, apologies. Um, the standard type architectures now, the weights themselves are about 500 meg in size. Um, if you're on a mobile app, you're not gonna wanna download 500 megs onto your mobile device uh, before you can do basic classification of an image. So what, they, what uh, some of the Google folks have done, they worked on something called MobileNet. And this is about 14 megs in size as opposed to 500 megs. It's not as good of accuracy, but it's pretty close. Um, so the goal is to make this, you know, it's in the name is to make it a mobile friendly thing, but still it's 10 to 15 uh, meg, which um, for my hardcore front-end folks, that is way too large. So potentially there's room for improvement. Um, it's gonna be very tough, I think, to get something that's that much smaller than 15 meg. Okay, so um, let's actually start with the example. Oops.
Okay, so I'm gonna, going to show you something very, very specific. All right, so imagine you're on a mobile device or you're on your laptop, you're waiting for the uh, neural net to download to your machine, right? Um, it's cache, so it's a little bit faster. But notice it says loading mobile net model. I can't do anything until that thing is loaded. I'll say more about that in just a second, right? I found a really cool React uh, component that's going to let me do something very, very cool. Um, okay, so the first thing here is I'm going to take this picture of a dog, right? I'm simply going to add it to the, um, the app, right? So I, I clicked it manually, I opened it, and there we go. Right, so you see immediately MobileNet classified this as a terrier of various kinds. Um, the things over here, these are probabilities. So the highest probability um, image class is the Norfolk Terrier, uh, a few English uh, terriers here, okay? So I don't want to sit there and click that guy. Here's a picture of my car. Um, I'm very proud of my car. I love my car very, very much. Um, my top speed is 132 miles per hour on Mopac. Um, I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, I haven't pushed the envelope past that just yet. Uh. This is really hard with one hand. There we go. Okay, so screwed up the image resizing here. But sports car, right? Obviously, but to the mobile net 0 0.9. Now, before I mentioned this thing is smaller, right? So you should be avi um, advised that here's a picture of my seven year old son when he wasn't seven. This is when he was about uh, eight months, nine months old, okay? Yes, I wanna show off pictures of, of my son because I am a proud dad, but that's actually not why I'm, I'm, I'm showing this off. He's a laptop. So the, the main thing is you need to draw from this is even a person, right? You would think, okay, maybe if you have some kind of weird object or something that's not in the image net, um, you know, the, the thousand labels in that data set, you would think, okay, all right. But this is a person. Um, but it thinks my young son is a laptop. Okay. Here's the GitHub unicorn. If you've ever seen this, I'm sorry. This is usually when bad things happen. Okay, it's a comic book, right? But the one thing to stress to you is see how fast it is, right? This, I mean, in the browser, you can see how this is pretty useful. We're gonna go through code in just a second. Um, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Uh, this is a unicorn boat from Costco, it was $199. I nearly bought it as a team building exercise uh, for Novi. I did not buy it, I'm very sad. Um, okay, let's see what that one is. It's a lighter <laughs> and also ocarina. Um, those are pretty close. And then maybe an electric guitar. Like I look at this and I really go, I don't know what it's picking up on in order to, to make that call. Okay, let's, let's look at code a little bit. Okay, so this is a single, a, a one, um, one file app, uh, one page app, if you will. The thing that I was using, I called it out just a moment ago, where you just can drag an image to your, your browser. Is this thing called Magic Drop Zone. I mean, it did all the heavy lifting for me, right? I, this is actually, I can make fun of JavaScript people all day, but they have cool stuff like this. Um, just import it, and it just works magically. This actually is a much simpler app than the one I just showed you. You know, the, the previously building a model was, you know, it's not that it's hard, it's just uh, it wasn't 30 lines of code or whatever this is. Uh, 73, but most of that's HTML type stuff. Okay, so um, React state here. I have a, a TensorFlow model, but you know, uh, in the beginning, by default, it's null. I have a preview and classified labels. So classified labels, that's what we were looking at, uh, the terrier or the 
uh, lighter or something along with the, the probabilities. And the image preview is uh, the actual image that was showing up in the, in the browser. Notice it's a string to begin, uh, to begin with. Um, okay, so when the app is launched, um, if, if you're not familiar with React, you have this component did mount and there's a bunch of other things similar. What it's doing here is it's saying, you know, right now um, until this thing, so let me say that differently, this method is um, fired when, suffice it to say, the app is ready to go. Uh, at that point, the um, mobile net itself will be loaded, right? So again, this is a promise. So mobile net, mobile net dot load, right? So if I were to replace mobile net with some other classifier, say VGG 16, that's a much bigger object, right? So it's gonna take quite some time to load this guy, right? It is smaller, so it doesn't take that long to, to load, but still if you're on a, on a mobile device, it could take quite a bit. So here, everything is just kind of waiting, right? So let's come back here, I'm gonna show you again. It says loading mobile net model, right? It's waiting and now it's done, right? It's because I'm not on my, my phone and I'm on fast Wi-Fi. If I was out in the middle of nowhere, that would take forever and it would just show that message uh, until it's loaded. Of course, as soon as it's um, loaded, I don't have to train, right? I just downloaded this from somewhere, the cloud, whatever that means. Um, I have loaded this guy, right? And so all I'm going to do is as soon as I've, I've loaded this thing, I'm going to set it in my state. So no longer is this going to be null, I'm going to assign that object here, right? So that's basically it. The rest of this is about the actual app. Um, there's two things that's going, that are going on here. Um, this is the, that really cool magic drop zone. Apologies for jumping around. That magic drop zone on drop, what it's doing is it's saying, I'm gonna take that image and do something with it. Uh, the main thing that I'm gonna call your attention to is this on image change. So as soon as the, um, the image has changed, right, I've, I've, I've dropped that image onto the, the browser and uh, what it's going to do is it's going to fire an event and the image that I actually uh, dragged and dropped onto the app is stored in this e.target, right? So I'm going to take this model, which is in state, TF model, right? I'm going to then classify it. Oops, that's not good. I'm going to classify that image, right? Again, the main thing is that this is, these are all promises, promises all the way down. So I'm gonna classify this. So presumably this could take a little bit. It's not immediate, you know, it, it could take um, milliseconds. If it's a larger network, it could take um, more than that. Um, when that is done, then I will take the classified labels. So that is the output from the classification. I'm gonna write it to, the, I'm gonna log it to the, um, uh, to the browser, but I'm also going to set the state. So these right here, when I set that state, that's actually what is displayed to the actual browser, right? So I hope you'll agree with me that especially if you're um, a JavaScript veteran, this is pretty straightforward. This is a really simple app. Uh, the rest of it is my render function, which is a bunch of HTML type stuff um, that actually handles the image change and the, the dropping of that image. So really, what I'm trying to sell you on is how simple that was to load the classifier into basically on your phone or on your laptop, all right? And then to classify was, was pretty straightforward. Any questions? Cool. Um, one more thing um, before we wrap this up. Um, I mentioned before that you can um, export from Python and import um, into JavaScript. So just what I just did was, you know, I loaded MobileNet um, and actually used it in, in my simple little app that I built. You can also take a, say, a Keras model or something similar. There's a bunch of options here. This, um, yeah, so Keras here. Um, if you were to have a Keras model, 
um, you, you can export that just as you would normally do. There are a few ways to actually do this, but one of them is uh, at the command line is to use this um, utility called TensorFlow.js converter. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that Keras model and then map it to TFJS target dir. So it's going to be, uh, it's not gonna create a single file, it's actually gonna create quite a few files in, in a path, right? Along with a manifest um, JSON of some kind. So in order to load that, that model that you've built in Python, right? It's pretty simple. Um, you do something similar instead of doing, you know, loading mobile net, you're going to, this is actually supposed to be one line, um, you're going to do a tf.load layers model and you basically um, pa um, pass in the, the path to um, that model JSON file and it will take care of, of the rest. So th that actually makes it quite simple. You can actually, uh, this can be um, some kind of URI. So it can be HTTP colon backslash uh, backslash um, Novi Labs uh, slash um, mobile net uh, replacement model or something like that. And so you could easily just map it to something that's uh, stored elsewhere and it will just load it. Okay, so um, coming to the end of the talk, um, I've been blogging off and on for um, a few years. Haven't really been doing anything lately. Um, so the next couple steps is I'm gonna take a bunch of this information, kind of kind of can it down into a, a blog level, also do some YouTube on the same stuff. Um, what I'm actually looking at, because I've actually been doing a little bit more than what I showed you today, um, my son is seven years old. Uh, we went on a very long road trip. Uh, if he would have asked me to play rock, paper, scissors one more time, I might have uh, left him wherever we were. And uh, so I decided, you know what, I'm actually going to make an app that will, will do that. Um, he can play rock, paper, scissors against the computer on my computer, uh, on my computer using a webcam. So it's pretty similar to what you saw with the transfer learning thing. Um, I was going to talk about it tonight, but I realized it's a little too ambitious to go through all that material. Um, so, and there's a few other things that are pretty interesting for the more advanced um, user. Okay, so questions? <laughs> yeah, um, that, that is true. Uh, what, what she said was, uh, as soon as I write the program, uh, he's not going to want to play rock, paper, scissors anymore. And yeah, that's all too true. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So let's let's talk about it in a simple example. Um, so this model dot fit, um, it is asynchronous by definition. It actually returns a promise as opposed to a fitted object. So the asynchronous piece is actually built into TensorFlow.js, and that's probably the biggest challenge to to get going. So it wasn't that I chose async versus sync. Um, it's actually that's the way. Um, that's the way it was uh, built into TFJS. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, so let's, the thing I showed, um, it's a good question. So the, the question was, um, Transfer learning, where, where are we learning about it? This, this example is a perfect example of transfer learning, right? Um, the, the standard way that TensorFlow.js does transfer learning is mostly through the k-nearest neighbors uh, classifier. Um, so most of their apps are geared towards that. There's by no means do you have to use, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, k-nearest neighbors. Um, so I have been toying with transfer learning off and on for many, many years. And when it became so easy to use, I wanted to start building a few apps around it. Um, that's actually how the, the rock, paper, scissors things work. Um, in terms of other things, uh, I think historically transfer learning has been pretty opaque. 
uh, mostly in like uh, esoteric literature, I think that's becoming no longer the case. Does that answer your question? Okay. Um, okay. Yes, sir. That is a great question. Um, I don't know. Uh, I really haven't done any benchmarks, um, nor have I seen it. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Python version is way faster. Um, yeah, there you go. A buy new. 50, 50 times slower. I'm, I'm standing by that one. No, uh, 50 times. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll put it in the... In, in, I'm going to add another slide. A bias said 50 times slower. Uh, any other questions? Have you learned to appreciate JavaScript programming? No. Uh, the question was, have you learned to appreciate JavaScript? No. <laughs> um, Oh, the people who can, no. <laughs> no, actually, uh, I, I've been wanting to do JavaScript stuff. I wrote JavaScript way back before all this cool new stuff. Uh, I've been wanting to do it for some time. Now I have a reason. Cool. Yes, sir. Uh, does it have any business applications uh, in my field? Just in my field in particular or just in general? Um, I'm in the oil and gas business. Sorry if that hurts your feelings. I'm not really sorry. Um, actually, I think so. Uh, I, th I think there's probably a lot of applications in terms of um, doing various forms of NLP like or OCR with, with, with the phone. Um, I would imagine that that's probably going to be pretty popular in a lot of domains. Um, I could see a few other situations like auditing like forms Right? Instead of having to, to um, just simply download this, this model that's pre-built into a web app and actually scan things and do OCR, uh, at least in my field. Yes, sir. Okay, so if there are no more questions, um, if you're, oh, a couple. I, I think that's what Abai was asking just a moment ago. Uh, on the training side, um, Abai says, and I'm going to hold him to it, it's 50 times slower on the JavaScript side. On the prediction side, I don't think the latency is that much different. I mean, clearly the Python version is going to be faster, but I don't, like, practically speaking, unless you're, you have high throughput, uh, I don't think it's that much slower. I was really hoping I was going to shake things up with that. <laughs> Appreciate the history. Um, <laughs> so if you don't know me very well, I like to troll everybody. Um, and it's, I like to troll some more than others. OK, uh, appreciate the, the input. Uh, you are spot on. Um, I'm only being <laughs> provocative. All right, if there are no more questions, uh, typically we go to CU29 right across the street as soon as we're done. Uh, 
Look forward to seeing you there.